It is now two weeks since Russia invaded Ukraine. And to give his assessment of the situation, I'm joined by Air Marshal Edward Stringer, former Director of Operations at the Ministry of Defence. Now, Good evening. Ed, that is not the map that President Putin would be hoping to look at two weeks into the operation. No, and uh, as you can see, the map really doesn't appear to have changed that much um, uh, in the last week. Uh, if we look into the south, what we can see here is that long-standing Russian ambition of a land bridge from Crimea, which it grabbed in 2014 through the Donbass back into Mother Russia. But also what it's trying to do is project forward further into the Black Sea and to, um, and to seize uh, Odessa, which is the, uh, is the, the major port. Um, but what... It, before I go further, what I do want to say is you don't win wars by seizing all the territory. You won't see this whole map go red. There won't be one soldier in every square yard. You do it by seizing that critical national infrastructure, vital ground and the centres of national government. So, uh, you know, if we look in the north, what we can see there is obviously the reveal plan uh, is, well, or was, a two to three day oper operation, a lightning operation to seize the capital, to put in a puppet regime to turn... Ukraine into a client state and hope that 44 million Ukrainians would just accept that. A heroic assumption. Well, let's take a closer look at what this is happening in the north then. I mean, first of all, of course, we have got uh, the, the attempts to open up those uh, humanitarian corridors and they did work in, in Sumy and in the towns to the uh, west of Kiev. They didn't work so well elsewhere, unfortunately, in Ukraine. But you want to talk a little bit more about what's happening around the capital here? Yes, one of the bits that has changed is you know, this thrust we see here uh, from east to west aimed at Kiev, which we, we must assume is directly related to that convoy that we've been talking about over the last week, the 40-mile convoy that's come uh, north to south aimed at Kiev, but now looks very much like a self-inflicted wound. That looks like a 40-mile uh, roadblock that the Russians have put in on that vital line of communication. So this now looks like the, the line of communication they're opening up on this thrust into Kiev, but it looks about two or three times as long as that one, and it's yet another logistic challenge uh, for them to solve. Clearly what they're looking to do here is put pressure on that centre of government, that seat of government of Ukraine in Kiev, and position themselves to uh, seize some form of ground to give them a better bargaining position to try and find a political solution. Uh, and we, uh, if we take a closer look then at uh, what's happening in, in the air, uh, we, we know from uh, the, what's happened overnight with the, with the Americans, the, the offer to, uh, to the, the MiGs from Poland uh, into NATO and then to Ukraine, the Americans didn't want any part of that. But the UK Defence Secretary uh, has said that the UK will supply missiles. So it's a, it's a subtle difference perhaps. Well, if you look at what uh, Ben Wallace, the Defence Secretary, said, what did the missiles he talked about both had an anti in front of them, anti-tank missiles and anti-air missiles. Uh, those are not a problem to you unless you are yourself offensive and you're driving tanks towards the Ukrainian defenders or you're flying, flying your aircraft in. So they're purely defensive missiles. If there was no attack uh, happening against Ukrainian forces, then those uh, defensive weapons have no offensive purpose. Air Marshal Edward Stringer, thank you very much indeed. It is a significant difference for NATO.